You've been fired. Now what? Now what? I'm going to teach you today how you can brand yourself on the hottest platform today for three-dimensionalizing yourself, building your self-worth and providing value. Come on back. This is a LinkedIn branding masterclass, especially for you who is looking to build and grow on that platform. Come on back. It's Nez Nation Live, y'all. Welcome everybody to Nez Nation Live. How in the world are you? I hope you're doing really well today. It is I, Professor Nez, your personal branding coach, helping you to advance your career, grow your business so you can earn more, stress less. Come on back. We're talking about LinkedIn. You guys know, most of you guys know, this is my beloved platform. I've been on this platform for over 10 years. Uh, I love what's been happening over the last four or five years. Good to see you guys on YouTube, on LinkedIn. Come on in, come on in. Make sure you share this out. If you know somebody who's been recently fired, if you know anybody who's trying to build and grow their personal brand on this amazing platform, you're not going to want to miss this. You want to share this out. Bring them over here because I'm going to teach you everything. I'm going to show you everything. I'm going to open behind the curtain. You're going to get it all, especially for you. This is a question that came directly from uh, a member here of our Nez Nation audience. And I thought it was a great way to both talk about just this awesome platform and how you should be on this platform creating content that builds your personal brand and what to do if you've just been fired and you wore many hats at your previous position and you're wondering, well, now what do I do? I'm going to talk about that too. Come on in, come on in. Make sure you share this out. Make sure you share this out. I want to say hello to my man, Mike Fiorini. Is that Mr. Uh, Hybrid Steel? How you doing, Neil? Good to see you guys. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Brian Schulman over on uh, LinkedIn. Good to see you, Brian. Fantastic to see you, brother. So I, I, you know, I want to just kind of give a brief sort of definition again before we get cooking here uh, on what exactly is personal branding. What does that mean? First of all, this is nothing new. This is something that's been happening since the dawn of mankind. It's basically become a thing now because whereas before the best way to build your reputation, the best way to communicate your value, the best way to convey how you can solve people's problems, it really took a lot more boots on the ground. In other words, you know, not a lot of us had money to pay for an ad in a newspaper. Not a lot of us had money to pay for a radio ad or definitely not a TV commercial. I mean, that was beyond anybody's scope. Now with the advent of all this technology over the last 10, 12 years, we've been able to go directly to who we need to go to. We have all these free platforms. We have all these free offerings and where to communicate who in the world we are, why people should pay attention to us, and what problem we can solve. If you want to advance your career, who in the world are you? Why should I pay attention to you? 
What problem can you solve? If you want to grow your business, your brand, you want your content to get in front of more eyeballs and earballs. I need to know why. I don't need to know why I should even care about you. This is super, super important, y'all. So personal branding has been around since the dawn of time. It's just become a thing now. And I, as your personal branding coach, somebody who studied, researched, practiced, executed communications. I'm a communications professor. I'm a business owner. I know a lot about online marketing. I know a lot about SEO. I know a lot about Facebook ads, Instagram ads, uh, you name it, uh, even uh, pre-roll ads on YouTube, Google, search. This is the game that we're living in now. This is the brand new game that we're living in right now. And there's so many opportunities. They're calling this the gig economy, not by accident. This is the gig economy because there's technology has produced this amazing, amazing landscape for us. And so if you're somebody who's wondering, well, how do I even get started on LinkedIn? How in the world do I even, why should I even be on LinkedIn? I'm going to break it down for you, especially if you're somebody who has recently lost your job. I'm also an executive career coach. I'm a LinkedIn consultant. So I help clients and I'm, I'm going to give you exactly the same type of advice that I give all of my clients. I'm gonna give it to you right now. You're gonna get everything. And so I think this is gonna be a jam-packed value video for you. I'm calling this a LinkedIn masterclass. It's not just for people who you know uh, have just been fired, even though the title sort of uh, uh, speaks to that. It's for anybody who's looking to understand this platform a lot better. LinkedIn is not the stiff repository it used to be where you just plaster your resume and you just kind of leave it there and just, I don't know, have some kind of hope or intention, but you don't really spend any time there. No, LinkedIn has definitely become, to me, it's like Facebook 2010, 2012, before Facebook has, you know, really experienced a lot of these troubles and problems. Ever since, you know, Microsoft and Satya Nadell purchased LinkedIn back in 2016 for just a cool $26 billion, this platform has become more and more resonant with storytelling, more and more resonant with networking, with building relationships, more and more resonant with creating, you know, really highly thriving communities and groups. LinkedIn groups is a great thing to leverage. I'm going to talk about all of that and more. So come on in, come on in. Let me say hello to see who's here. Uh, make sure that you leave, uh, let me know where you're coming from in the chat down below. Uh, I would really love to know, uh, we've got hybrid steel. We've got the urban explorer. Fantastic. We've got LinkedIn. Let me know where you're coming from on LinkedIn. Make sure you share this out. Uh, if you're looking to advance your career, you're looking to grow your business. You don't want to miss this live stream show today. You definitely don't. Happy Sunday. Good to see you, Brian. Fantastic. Um, Urban Explorer, very fantastic. Urban says, little changes have made a big difference. It took me one video from 950 to 1700. Just a few changes and I've been told, fantastic. Good for you. I love your growth, man. And I commented to you about this yesterday. I love what you're doing with your videos. I love that you're, you know, this is somebody, this is really a good example, actually. Uh, not only are your locations insane, I need to go check out that castle, Neil. But um, what you've been really doing is you've really rebranded yourself uh, from somebody who was mostly in the crypto market to now something that's your, your passion, something that you love. And this is maybe a great launching point for the first kind of mode or, or first kind of module, if you will, that I want to convey to you. And that is this. If you've just been fired, you got to understand something. You are more than just your job. Personal brand is all about you. It's not about your company. LinkedIn is not about just where you work, what you do. It's about you yourself as a human being. Personal branding humanizes who you are. It three-dimensionalizes who you are. You're not just a resume. You're not just a transcript. You're not just a list of accomplishments. You're not just a diploma. You're bigger than that. Now, there's opportunities for you to fully flesh out to fully bring to the table, not just in the form of video, not just in the form of live streaming, not just in the form of, you know, what people are taught calling the hot kind of content uh, tools or YouTube or anything like that. I'm going to talk to you about a lot of other things you can do now. But first things first is personal. It's personal. It's about you. 
I need to know who you are. If I'm going to hire you, if I'm going to, you know, bring you in on onboard you into my organization, if I'm going to really take a chance on you, invest in you, bring you into my team, bring you into my already trusted inner circle, whether it be an organization or whether it be a, you know, a small mid, mid, small mom and pop, mid-sized business, or even just, you know, a, um, you know, even just a, uh, uh, you know, if it's, even if it's just a, another, another type of, you know, business or entity, I need to trust you. I need to trust you. I need to figure out who you are. I need to try to come to an understanding as to who is this person? Who am I talking to? And that's why people, you know, a lot of people like to say this. They like to say that, well, you know, isn't that what the interview is for? Yeah. But how would you like to convey a stronger impact before you even get into the interview? How would you like to convey in three dimensions? What I mean by three dimensionalize yourself, you're bigger than just a, you know, a place that you worked. You're bigger than just a title. You're bigger than how many years you've been there. You're bigger than your degree. Now with personal branding and now that, you know, Microsoft has really turned this company LinkedIn into a beautiful branding platform, you can reach your audience in such amazing ways. And LinkedIn is probably the only place as of this recording where you can get serious, and I mean serious, organic reach. It's just phenomenal. How many people out there, I'd love to know in the chat, how many people out there right now, okay, have a brand? I can't see the comments on LinkedIn right now. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. Now I can. Hey, Trent Fields is in the house. Good to see you. Hey, Randall from New Orleans. Fantastic. Dara or Dara from uh, Orange County. Good to see you, Anna. Okay, now I can see the comments. For some reason, LinkedIn, link, LinkedIn. <laughs> For some reason, LinkedIn froze on me. Uh, we've got Kathy Fit. Hey, good to see you, Kathy Fit. Luis is in the house on 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 YouTube. Podcasting is another medium is taking off. I'm going to talk about podcasting in just a second. I definitely want to talk about podcasting. Hey, thank you so much, Kathy Fit. You're going to get a lot out of this. Make sure you smash that smash button. Make sure you share this out. I'm going to be bringing you all the gems, and I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Please leave your questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer your questions. But this is what I want to talk about first. What I want to talk about first is that you're bigger than your job. You're bigger than your title. Okay? When you're building a personal brand, if you've just been fired from someplace, I actually think, which I've been, you know, let go from places before, uh, you know, when I lived in the corporate, you know, kind of world way before... Even universities, you know, I've been I've been let go before. It's a terrible feeling, and sometimes you feel this is the end of the world, or sometimes you feel like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? I actually think this is the best thing that ever happened to you. This is your time. This is the best point in your career. This is the best point in your life to start building your personal brand, a strategic ownership of your online reputation. I want to share a stat with you. 92% of employers search your online presence, social media profiles during the interview process. This is an opportunity. This is a major opportunity. If you have a business, I mean, the percentages are even higher now. There's a reason why Amazon owns the world. Something that I like to tell my clients all the time, I don't want you to be a uh, blockbuster. I want you to be Netflix. You have to understand the landscape. You have to understand where attention is. You have to understand how consumers are consuming information. Where are they getting their up-to-date, state-of-the-art, latest breaking news? Where are, they, where are they creating their communities? Where are they creating relationships? Where are they networking? Where are they actually transacting? And there's no other place than what's happening on the internet. And there's about two or three major platforms where most of this is happening. And you could almost say 98% of what people are doing on mobile, on the internet has something indirectly or directly related to social media. I'm not doing this for kicks and giggles. I'm doing this because it works. I'm doing this because this is valuable. I'm doing this because I know the power of this. You are all media companies. You need to think about yourself in that fashion now. You can document your journey. You can tell your experience. You can tell your story. You can communicate your values, your principles, your ethics. You can do all of that now directly, 
directly to the people who are the decision makers, whether it's customers, whether it's clients, whether it's employers, hiring managers, recruiters, C-level executives, you can go directly to the source. Now, one thing that's really cool one thing that's really cool about uh, you know doing all of this online is that you know you can actually have a nice little portfolio online. LinkedIn is a great place to have a nice little portfolio of you know where all your content lives. I mean, I'm a big believer that you should have a, your own domain. You don't want to live on rented property, so to speak, or you don't want to plant your flag on rented property, not that LinkedIn is going away anytime soon or YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or any of these places, but it is important, I think, to have your own, own your own domain. If you're watching this right now and you don't own your own domain, buy it ASAP, buy your own domain ASAP, because even a lot of you guys on YouTube, you're creating all this amazing content and you're leaving it there. You're not keeping it anywhere else. You're not putting it on a website that is yours, that you own. You're building something on rented property. So be careful of that. Be wary of that. I just want to caveat everything I'm saying right now with, you know, because I, I, I'm so bullish on LinkedIn. I'm such, such an advocate. I've been an advocate for this platform. I've been talking about LinkedIn video since early 2017, before everybody even thought LinkedIn was anything. So over two and a half years ago, I've been talking about how this platform is going to be the it platform. And now it's starting to come to fruition. So I've been really correct in my assessment of this. Uh, so, so just, I want to caveat is even though I'm, I'm saying, this is a, a fantastic platform, not just for content creators, not just for business owners, not just for uh, you know people who are trying to build a brand, but even for people who are trying to advance their career, maybe even more so for people who are trying to advance their career. Make sure that you own your own domain. I think this is important for anybody. Make sure that you own your own domain. Buy that ASAP because somebody else just might. And there's so many other... Uh, you know, there's so many domains, like if .com is taken, you don't need that. Uh, you don't need .com for your name. You don't need it. You can use, I mean, there's so many cool ones now. There's everything from .live to .net, .ninja. I mean, you could get really, really creative with your URL. And I, I actually encourage clients to be very creative with their URL. Why not? The fact is, is that you own that domain. That's where your content should really be eat, sleeping, and breathing. That's where you should really be drawing your traffic, so to speak. Um, creating a portfolio where you can literally just send a link for those of you who have been fired, have just been fired, or just been let go, creating a domain that's a direct link to where employers can click. I want to tell you a really quick story. I did this way before the iPhone was invented. I want to tell you a really quick story. Um, yes, Louise says, don't put your eggs in one basket. Kathy Fit, F Kathy Fit. am I saying that right, Kathy Fit? I hope I'm saying that right. Let me see. Uh, one second here, Kathy Fit. Yeah, I want to make sure I'm saying that right. Um, okay, yeah. Let me see, what does she say here? Let me know if I'm saying that right. I'm going to tell you a real quick story about something because it's it's going to be totally relevant and totally resonant and it's something that I want everybody to really understand. This is going to be huge. Hey Andrew, good to see you. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Yes, that's a, Andrew says on YouTube, do you mean first name last name dot com? Now it doesn't have to be your actual real first name last name, but I believe so mine is professornez.com. Uh, that's my brand, right? All my students, actually, it, the phrase came from, obviously, it's not my real name. That'd be kind of weird if my parents called me professor. But uh, it's based on my last name, shortened, um, that actually my students coined that phrase way like 15 years ago when I was first starting teaching because my last name was a little bit difficult to say. And so my students coined that phrase, Professor Nez, and it just stuck. And I absolutely love it. Uh, and I, I think it just sounds better. It's easier to say, and it's got a nice ring to it. And so it's just something that's always stuck with me. You could do something very, very similar. It doesn't have to be first name, last name.com, but 
if you're going to do something that's based on like your expertise, like I see people doing this, trying to game SEO, it's not really good boogie, especially if you understand that Google just came out with probably the most landmark, uh, most, uh, pace, most really critical change to SEO and search, most severe change to SEO and search in the last maybe 10, 15 years. I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, I would actually definitely use firstnamelastname.com, okay? That, I think that's way more important because when you build a personal brand, you could buy two domains. You could do one firstnamelastname.com or you can do one. I have professornez.com and I have professornez.live. Um, but, but, you know, I haven't really done anything with professornez.live. Everything kind of eats, sleeps, and breathes at my website. Um, but, um, yes, I think everybody should have a portfolio. Everybody should have a collection of their content. And I want to tell you a really quick story way before the iPhone was invented, way before, um, you know, we had this amazing technology that you can actually just pick up your smart device and literally create some value. And somebody in Tunisia could see it. That is remarkable to me, by the way. I mean, think about that, guys. Think about that, Nez Nation. The fact that you could literally just pick up your phone, post something anywhere you want, and somebody across the globe can see that, feel that, maybe even, you know, contact you, build something, you know, have a relationship, professional or personal or what have you. The fact that that can take place is remarkable, especially you young folk. We didn't have anything even near that today, that we, in our day that you guys have today. It's absolutely stupefying if you really think about it. It's amazing. I hired a videographer when I was first teaching. I knew that this was going to be the best way for me to make a name for myself. This really has a lot to do with why I kind of grew into being a personal branding coach. I hired a videographer and this cost me at least, I think, $3,500. And I said, I want you to come to my class and record me giving a lecture, record me in action and you know I'll pay you for your services. It was very expensive back then. There wasn't any fancy modern cameras that we have today. I mean, this was old like where the camera looked like a giant uh, you know, box and with wires coming out of it and it looked like you were carrying around a uh, dump truck on your shoulder. This is a long long time ago. And so I hired this videographer to come in and film me and he put it on <laughs> If you guys can remember this, he put it on a DVD. Does anybody remember a DVD? Let me know in the chat if you remember DVDs. I know they still exist, but does anybody even use DVDs anymore? I hope not. Hey, Barb, good to see you. Fantastic to see you, Barb. Dara, so good to see you. Make sure you share this out. This is going to be the ultimate. Everything you need to know about building your personal brand in 2020, especially on the hottest platform, my beloved platform, probably the place that I have the biggest presence, over 20,000 followers, uh, over 170 recommendations. You guys, here's another thing too. The proof is in the pudding. I've been seeing, and this really steams me up. I've been seeing all these people calling themselves LinkedIn experts. Hey, I'm a LinkedIn expert. How long have you been on the platform, bro? Two months? And all of a sudden, you're a LinkedIn expert. I go and check out some of these dudes and dudettes profiles. They've got like, you know, five followers and zero recommendations. Or, you know, they've got maybe, you know, uh, they've been on the platform for about 60 days and they have two recommendations from one of them's from their best friend, the other's from their mom. I've got over 173 recommendations from real clients. I've been on this platform building my presence, working my butt off, and I still to this day find it a little bit, um, I don't know, maybe presumptuous to call myself an expert because I go by one of my great mentors, Sean Ru Suzuki, once said, in the beginner's mind, the world is full of possibilities. In the expert's mind, the world is full of zero possibilities. I want to keep that beginner's mindset. Why do I want to why do I want to why do I want to keep that beginner's mindset? Because I want to keep learning. I want to keep 
getting better and better and better. And so, yeah, maybe I get, maybe I, I'm get overreacting a little bit, but it just, I, I really get bummed out because I get so many clients. I'm not even kidding you. Maybe this is a better reason to say this. I get so many clients come to me and say, Nez, I spent $2,000 with this so-called LinkedIn expert. I'm just so disappointed. I'm so upset. And then I go find out who is this LinkedIn expert that they worked with. And it's an abomination. Of course, I'm not going to name any names. Of course, I'm not going to put anybody on full blast because this is not about them. It's about you. Do your due diligence. Find out who these people are. Who in the hell is Professor Nez? Who am I? Well, what, just because this guy's a business writing professor for over 20 years and he's got all the, you know, go contact my previous clients. Every single one of the people who've left me a recommendation on my LinkedIn profile is a real person. No bot followers, no paid reviews. Everybody is real. Why? Because there's only two things, Nez Nation. There's only two things that matter in this LIFE. Your name and your word. That's it. You could have a billion dollars in the bank. You could have 6 billion followers. You could have 70 million subscribers. If your name and your word don't mean Jack, you got nothing in my book. Your name and your word is everything. Especially if you want to grow your and advance your career, especially if you want to build an online business that can give you freedom, that can give you time back, stop trading time for dollars, that can actually allow you to spend more time with your family, do the things that you love, investigate these so-called YouTube experts, LinkedIn experts, online experts, investigate, create a little bit of discernment, you know, deploy some critical thinking skills. That's what you need to do. Big John in the house. Hey, Charlie dog, Charlie. I just missed it. But Neil, did you say something about us showering together? I almost lost my train of thought there. Holy mackerel. Hey, is that Eric? Modern day tech. Modern day tech. I owe you a steak. It's coming. Vid Summit 2020. I owe you a steak. <laughs> it's good to see you, Eric. Hey, Kenneth Dunner on LinkedIn. Good to see you. And if you're on Periscope or Twitch, let me know where you're joining me from. Hey, Matthew, good to see you. Make sure that you leave a reaction. I want to see some reactions, some celebration insight. Make sure you share this out because sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. Share it out. Get this out there. Yeah, that's pretty, that's, you know what? It's so funny, Neil. I'm not, so Neil says something really interesting. And Neil, you're such a, you're such an awesome dude. Uh, great, great respect for my friend Neil here, the Urban Explorer. He's got a great channel too. Go check him out. Uh, still bugs me why Nez don't talk at VidSummit. We have all them LinkedIn non-experts. You know what? I'm not even worried about it. I actually, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the business of making money. I'm in the business of actually helping people. I'm in the business of actually, it's not about like, look at me, I spoke at this conference or look at me. I Look, I, I'm a professional speaker. I get paid to speak for actual businesses. I'm not too worried about impressing a bunch of content creators. I mean, I'm just not worried about that. Don't get me wrong. I love VidSummit. I love seeing you and Nick and the Nimmons and, and Eric and, and everybody, the whole gang, you know, Doug. Uh, I love seeing everybody, Car Galaxy Studios, uh, but it's not, I'm not worried about speaking at conferences like that because first of all, a lot of them, they don't pay you. Look, my, I, I need to get paid, yo. Um, I've got kids to feed. I've got a mortgage. I've got a wife who likes nice things, who's drop dead gorgeous. I'm not just doing this for kicks and giggles. Now I was born to do this. This is what I was born to do because I'm, I'm aware of that. I investigated that and I found my purpose. You know, as Mark Twain says, there's two miracles in your life. The day you're born. And the day you figure out why, I truly believe this. I'm the luckiest guy on earth. I was able to ascertain why I was put on this earth. And I'm bringing that to you, mindset and messaging. I suffered from debilitating, you know, depression and anxiety as a young man. And I took every pill. I went to every single doctor. None of it worked. So I self-educated myself. I rolled up my sleeves. I got dirty. I got sweaty. I worked nights. I worked when I was on the weekends. And I figured out what the hell was going on in my brain. And I studied. And I researched. I practiced. Now I'm sharing that with you. Same thing with communication. You know, all, all personal branding is, guys, 
All personal branding is, is just 21st century communications. Let me make it even more simple. It's just 21st century communications. If you don't understand that this is how people are doing their banking, conducting business, hiring, you know, uh, uh, building relationships, developing business partnerships. If you don't understand that this is where people are consuming, this is where people are transacting, this is where people are networking, that this thing called the internet and the, the major platforms on this thing called the internet is where all the attention is. If you don't understand that, then you are stuck. You're gonna be Blockbuster instead of Netflix. As my man Matthew Mitchell says, I don't want you to be Blockbuster. I want you to be Netflix. When's the last time you drove down the street and you saw a Blockbuster? Tell me in the chat. I dare you. Kenneth Dunner, it's so good to see you. Kenneth Dunner says, absolutely 100%. I remember DVDs. Okay, so getting back to this story. My God, I lost track. There's a huge shock. This is going to relate to why branding on LinkedIn is key. Okay, check this out. Check this out. This is very, very, very important. Check this out. So, so I hired this videographer just to finish this story really quickly. I hired this videographer. It cost me an arm and a leg back then as an adjunct professor. I mean, my God, I was not making good money. Lucifer, how are you? Good to see you on Twitch. Um, and I walked into the uh, interview. There was an interview for a specific position. And it was the chair of, uh, it was the chair of the department. And so I walked in, I walked into the, um, I walked into the office and he had a stack of CVs and resumes. I'll never forget his face. He had a real, real long uh, gray beard. And, um, you know, he just really looked the part. He really looked the part of like a, a typical professor. And um, I, uh, you know, I walked in, I was young, I was brash, and I walked in and I just dropped the DVD. Yes, DVD. <laughs> I dropped the DVD on top of this stack of CVs. And he gave me this look, Nez Nation, like, how dare you? Who do you think you are? What in the world is that? He didn't even say hello. He just said, what in the world is that? How dare you drop that on my stack of CVs? And I said, everything you need to know, I looked him right in the eye and I said, everything you need to know about me, everything you need to figure out if I'm good for this position or not is located on that DVD right there. And I walked outside the room thinking I was all cool. And as soon as I reached the threshold, he said, wait a minute. And I stopped in the threshold. I was like, ah, oh, he's going to like, he's going to chew my butt out now. He said, come back here. I turned around. He said, take a seat. I said, okay. I was like, oh man, he's going to give it to me. I knew, I knew this was a bad idea. I thought I was so cool hiring this videographer, creating this DVD, showing him like my personality because I knew that I could not be encapsulated in a piece of paper. I knew that what I do and what I bring to the table is bigger than just a stupid CV. It's just a stupid resume, which by the way, Nez Nation, even though I'm an executive career coach, actually who works for LinkedIn, I'm still saying, telling my clients and I'm telling you right now, the resume is going to be dead sooner than later. Be Netflix, not Blockbuster. Okay? Go where the future is going. Go where the attention is. Go where people are transacting business, hiring, developing, what have you. They're doing everything. So he said, have a seat. And so I sat down and he took my DVD and like I was sitting on the other side of the desk. He had a computer there. The monitor was facing him. He made me sit there in his nation. He put the DVD in his CD-ROM drive and he pressed play. And I could hear, I could hear only the audio, but I couldn't see the video. And so he just sat there and I just kind of sat there as awkward as H, awkward as F. And he watched it for about 15 minutes. I think it was like a 20, 30 minute lecture video. He watched it for about 15 minutes and I was trying to study his face. I was trying to tell like, is he digging it? Is he not digging it? Does he think I'm an a-hole? Does he like it? Does he not like it? And 
next thing I know, he turns off the computer and he stands up. I stand up and he extends his right hand and he looks me dead in the eye in his nation. He says, when can you start? Everybody else did the normal thing. Everybody else did the traditional thing. They turned in a CV or resume. I went one step further. I invested in my personal brand. I knew the power of video. I knew the power of three-dimensionalizing myself. And that's what landed me a gig. This was way back in the day, like 2000. Gosh, I don't even know. Maybe even 2004 or five. I can't even remember. Before YouTube, before Facebook, before the iPhone, right? Um, I think I had a little cell. I can't even remember the kind of phone that I had back then. But the point is this, is that this is what personal branding is all about. You've got everything that you need in your back pocket right now. So if you're trying to build a brand on LinkedIn, I personally think that the best way to do that, especially if you just got fired from your job, is to start focusing on you, not just your position, not just your title. What is that core essentiality? What is it about you that you can bring to the table? What value do you possess? How can you solve companies' problems? How can you solve organizations' problems and build your brand around that? Don't sell a damn thing. Don't try to act self-promotional. Help, help, help. Give as much as you can. Give it all away. Give it all away. And then make it personal. Make it personal. It doesn't have to necessarily be the kind of thing that I'm doing, doing live streams and podcasts. You know, you could written content is very underrated on LinkedIn. Written content is extremely underrated on LinkedIn. I'm trying to get the comments on LinkedIn. I'm not getting, uh, I apologize if I'm not responding to your comments. I'm trying to get them there. Andrew says, um, ha! Okay, so there's there's some due diligence right there. Andrew, I want to put your, your comment up. Uh, Andrew says, hello, Anna. Anna Teng Tenguma from Arizona. Good to see you. Andrew says, I met a guy off Craigslist last Friday to discuss business ideas. Terrible idea. Met at Starbucks, but I Google searched his name and he, was, he had been arrested for home invasion and fraud. I can't tell you uh, how many stories I've heard like this that are very similar to yours, Andrew. I mean, I can't even tell you. Um, and I can't tell you how this stuff works. How this stuff works. Talk about your expertise. Let's say you're a human resources manager. Let's say you're an administrative assistant. You know, start sharing your story with the world. Share your struggles. This is a really important thing with personal branding is I tell this to my clients and I tell this to my students and I say this to you guys all the time, Nez Nation. It's not all unicorns and yachts. Personal branding is not like, you know, fancy schmancy, uh, just, you know, uh, 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 dream fantasy Instagram posts, you know, where everybody's happy, go lucky and everybody's doing wonderful and marvelous and prancing through the hills and looking as good as ever. Share your personal struggle on LinkedIn. Share your truth uh, when, you're, when you're doing your personal brand. Share your struggles. Share your challenges. I think building a personal brand on LinkedIn is the best way to network. Networking is a huge facet to not only advancing your career, but just really being a human being. You have to be a person. You have to be a human being that people can relate to. I want to I wanna meet with you. I want to talk with you. I want to engage with you. You have something to offer. You're an interesting human being. It's not about you just being a professor, you just being a plumber, you just being a dentist, you just being a project manager. You're a human being. Personal branding humanizes you. So for example, for example, for, for, for example, uh, Kathy, I want to get to your question. Kathy, I want to I want to get to your uh, I want to get to your question in a second. Great question, Kathy. Uh, Kathy Fit. Um, so, for example, so for example, you could do a one to three minute video talking about just sharing with your audience, or forget video. Do a post on LinkedIn, a written post 
where you share your struggles, you share your journey, you share your story. Hey guys, I just got let go from this position. I felt very, very, uh, you know, strongly that I deserve to, to not only stay there, but get promoted. This is what I do. And now I'm just kind of at a loss. Now I've been trying to get together a resume or trying to apply to these different places. I feel a little displaced. Share your truth. Watch what happens. The beautiful thing about this awesome community on LinkedIn is everybody here wants to help. Everybody, this is a fantastic community of people who would love to help. And if you hit them with that emotion, if you hit them with that pathos, as Aristotle said, watch what happens. The sky's the limit. If you pull on people's, if you really, really, and I don't, I want to detract that. I don't want to say pull on people's heartstrings. But if you, if you tell your truth, if you share your vulnerability, share your confusion, share your frustration, the thing about a personal brand is it should be real. I'm not saying, I mean, don't get crazy here. Don't share everything. <laughs> I mean, keep it professional. But it drives me crazy when people, you know, all I get to see is one facet. All I get to see is one dimension. And it seems to always be, you know, everything's beautiful. Everything's great. Happy Monday, Motivation Monday, Thursday, life inspiring. I'm a, I'm a change ninja. What the hell is a change ninja? That sounds cuckoo to me. Share your vulnerabilities. Share your obstacles. Share your pain. Share your frustration. Watch what happens. It's a great way to network. Especially people will respect you. People will, it will resonate with you, with your audience. People will, I guarantee you, you will get massive amounts of engagement and you might just meet the right person at the right time who can help you get in front of the right person at the right time which could change your life forever why because i see it happen every single day this stuff is real this stuff works andrew getting back to you kathy leave i'm gonna i'm gonna leave your question up here kathy let me see uh, kathy's question how to get people to trust you when you're an expert just sharing out of experience I'm going to get to that in a second. So, so you're basically t asking how to build thought leadership, right? How to build yourself as someone who's a go-to person in your specific niche. Is that correct? Uh, clarify that for me, please, uh, Kathy, in the comments. Let me know if I'm on the right uh, path. Maria Santos. How are you, Maria Santos? Public policy administration. I'm going to, I'm going to answer that question right away. Um, but, but case in point, I'm a perfect example that this stuff works. I have a video on YouTube, okay, that has about 10,000 views, but I've earned six figures in business from that one video. I use it as a CRM tool. I send it out to potential clients, to prospective clients, and it's helped me exponentially grow my agency, my consulting agency. I do personal branding, executive career coaching, social media marketing, life coaching. It's a consulting agency. It's my own business. I also have an online academy. Hello, shameless plug, beyondtheboxacademy.com. These are the ultimate digital courses taught by an actual business communications professor, not just some online schmo, taught by an, somebody who actually has credentials. Somebody who actually has the expertise. Hello? I've got a flagship course in my academy, personal uh, online, uh, uh, beyondtheboxacademy.com. It's about personal branding 101, how to make money with your personal brand. And just for you, if you use the code NESNATION, 30% off. Hello? Go check that out. You should check that out. For the love of everything holy, you should check that out. No, you do not need to pay to use LinkedIn. Okay, so Kathy, are you clarifying? I mean, not an expert, not an expert. How to get people to trust you when you're not an expert. Okay, just sharing out of expertise. So it depends on what you want, Kathy. It depends on what you want. Like, what do you want? What is your objective? What is your goal for building your personal brand? Is it to get people to buy a product? Is it to get people to uh, join your cause, join your... A mission statement? Is it for people to hire you to, you know, advance your career? What is your goal? Whatever your goal is, that's your compass. That's your destination. And then you reverse engineer and, and basically come up with a strategy on how to get there. Self-publishing with Walter. W.W.'s in the house. It's about time, Walter. 
The Urban Explorer says, I'm working on trying to get my value proposition. Yes, what value do you propose to give? I would say for you, Neil, it's making van life more uh, acceptable and simple. You know, uh, creating a life uh, that you want on the road. That'd be a great value proposition. When, when, you're, when you're thinking about constructing a value proposition, and make sure you smash that smash button as you're coming in on here. When you're thinking about creating a value proposition, which is essentially like your tagline, your, your business or career tagline brand, right? When you're thinking about doing that, always think about, and you can go to my website. I mean, I always try to say, I always try to practice what I preach. Here's a th this is going to be really, really powerful. If you haven't shared yet, share right now because this is going to knock your socks off for value proposition. And this actually resonates with your content too. Three things. Start with the audience. Start with their problem. What is their problem? So that's number one. Write these three things down. Start with their problem. If you want to create the perfect value proposition, if you want somebody to watch your videos longer, if you want somebody to actually at least check out your website, check out your offering, somebody to check out your LinkedIn profile, start with this value proposition. This is huge. This is a three-step process. And I know I've used this before, but I'm going to say it again. This is what you need to do. Number one, start with the audience. What is their pain point? What is their struggle? What is their challenge? that you are going to propose to solve. Start with that. Number two, talk about the solution. What is the solution to their problem and pain point and obstacle and challenge? And then number three, talk about the result, the transformation. Nobody wants to buy an online course. Nobody wants to buy an ebook. Nobody wants to buy a membership site. That sounds grotesque. Nobody wants to buy, okay, uh, uh, a training workshop. Nobody wants to buy that. Nobody wants to buy your, you know, uh, five step, you know, checklist or what have you. People want to buy transformation. So instead of saying, buy my course, what you want to say is, do you want to build something online that will give you freedom, more money, and more time with your family? Boom. Now you got my attention. Holy macadamia nut. Yeah, I want more freedom. Yeah, I want more time. Yeah. Are you struggling to figure out this thing called online internet branding? Are you trying to figure out social media? Are you finding yourself, you know, knocking your head against the wall, trying to figure out YouTube, trying to figure out LinkedIn? Here is your, here is your solution right here. Boom. I've got a perfect step-by-step -step hand, hold your hand course that's going to guide you by the way, you can get all this stuff for free. Like anybody who's got a course, of course, some of you might be thinking, why should I build a course? Why should I build a digital product when it's everything's on the internet? Yeah, but you're not understanding. People buy convenience. People buy convenience. It saves them time. What you're basically selling is you're selling them time. You're giving them time back. Of course, if anybody, you know, these people who sell $3,000, $1,800 YouTube courses, and believe me, they're making serious money selling those courses. You can get all that stuff for free online. I consult with Shopify clients all the time. I've got clients who build courses around how to execute e-commerce and Shopify. You can get all that stuff for free online, but you have to search for hours and hours and hours. It takes a lot of time to find all the information. Where do you start? Where do you end? Who do you trust? How do you da-da-da-da? It's, it's, you're selling convenience. That's what you have to understand. Kathy, I want to get to your question. Kathy Fit. So how do you, how do you, okay, just to clarify, just to clarify, I want to really, I want to get to Kathy's question. How do you get people, how do you get people to trust you when you're not an expert just sharing out of experience, question mark? So this is a great question. How do you get people to trust you when you're not an expert? Well, First of all, as I said before, what's your objective? What do you want to happen? Okay, whether you is you want to sell something, you want to you want to grow a business, you want to start a business, you want to start creating content, you want people to 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 listen to what you have to say that they could learn something from that feels good, or you want to advance your career. All that stuff is gravy. All that stuff is fantastic. Um, you 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 just you don't you don't have to. It's it's all be the, how you get people to trust you. 
how you get people to actually listen to you is you actually share authentically what you know. You're not trying to be something that you're not. Yes, you share your experience, but also I'm not just sharing my experience with depression, anxiety. I'm not just sharing my experience with communications and branding. I do my research too. So I am sort of the hub. Anything you want to know about mindset and messaging, Nez's channel is the hub. Why? Because I do it. I execute it. I practice it. I research it. I've done my due diligence. You can verify all this stuff in the real world. And here's another thing I want to tell you too, Kathy Fit. People don't buy your credentials. They buy your energy. You need to look them in the eye and actually help them share things that resonate with your audience. If you actually help them, if you create content that's actually valuable and helpful, you will win. I can't tell you how many clients, I can't tell you how much money I've made just by somebody randomly watching a Facebook video, just by somebody randomly listening to a podcast episode, just by somebody randomly checking out one of my LinkedIn videos or one of my live streams on YouTube. It's top of the funnel. It's top of the funnel. People don't do business with people that they don't know, first of all. Definitely, they have to like you. And then after they understand who you are and they like you, then you establish that third crucial element, which is trust. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. Top of the funnel is awareness. They need to know who you are. Three-dimensionalize yourself. Does that make sense, Kathy Fit? I hope it does. Flash in your pan, hashtag flash fam in the house. LinkedIn, how we doing? LinkedIn, how we doing? We had some people on Twitch too. Uh, I want to see for some reason, I'm not getting the comments on LinkedIn. I don't know what's going on. Let me, um, let me just get out of here for just a second. I just want to check something out really, really quickly. Let me know on LinkedIn. I'm not, for some reason, I am just not getting the comments. But Kathy, let me know if that helped you. Did that did that help you at all? Did that make sense at all? You can here's another thing that's really undervalued and uh really severely overlooked when it comes to uh severely overlooked when it comes to LinkedIn and that is uh writing articles. And when I say writing articles, I'm not just talking about, you know, you don't have to be a professional writer. You don't have to be, you know, a journalist. You don't have to be. This is just you sharing. And it doesn't have to be 3,000 words or a long New York Times article. People, I think they overlook. Write about subjects related to what you feel is your core essentiality. Are you a project manager who excels at this? Are you a human resources director who excels at this? You're really, really good with streamlining processes. You're really, really good with people. You're really, really good with collaboration. You're really, really good with leadership. You're really, really good with whatever, X, Y, Z. Write articles helping people. Content, high quality content is content that serves an audience. That's what high quality content is. That serves an audience. Hopefully, I'm exemplifying that by doing this very thing right here. I'm helping people, okay, to understand that this platform, LinkedIn, is an amazing place to build your brand. It's an amazing top of funnel. Raise awareness. People need to know you. I cannot tell you guys how many times I've had a client say, okay, I got 10 proposals, Nez. I picked you because your video I loved your energy. I could get a vibe of who you were. I could feel your your ambition. I could feel your sincerity. I could feel your passion. Video is a fantastic way of doing it, but articles on LinkedIn, written posts, like written opinion, opinion pieces on certain topics. I'm also going to give you an amazing way to find good ideas for content too. So good to see you, Flash, in your pan. It's so good to see you. Make sure you smash that smash button when you're coming on in. You know, I haven't uh, gone live on Sundays in forever, but I didn't get a chance to go live this Thursday, and I just apologize, guys. I'm still kind of experimenting with uh, some times to go live. Let me know on Twitch. Let me know on Periscope. Let me know on LinkedIn. Let me know on YouTube. In the comments down below, let me know what's, what's your favorite time 
that you would love to be watching these because I want to still have a very continuous, consistent live stream schedule. And also let me know topics you'd love to hear about. Social media, branding, e-commerce, online business, coaching, making money, consulting, mindset, messaging, depression, anxiety, God, I'll talk about it all. I'll talk about it all. Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to help. Luis says, yeah. Oh, that's a great topic. That's a great topic. I love it. Luis, fantastic. Let me bring that up. My mod, my main mod. How you doing, Luis? Evoke emotion on your writing that will get people thinking. Don't be bland on your writing. Then people will find that boring. This is something that I've been meaning to do a masterclass on, which is copywriting. Copywriting is a big part because, you know, um, when you're trying to create that awareness and you're trying to get people to watch your videos, and also don't forget, titles and tags are a part of copywriting when it comes to YouTube, all you content creators out there on YouTube. Um, but especially when you want to repurpose it on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or what have you, um, copywriting, compelling copywriting that gets audiences, that gets your peeps to click on your content is really, really important, especially on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. It's super important. And so I've been thinking about, uh, I've been thinking about, um, thank you. Thank you, Hybrid Steel. I appreciate that. I've been thinking about, um, doing a topic on copywriting, how to write really excellent copywriting that hits your audience on their pain points, that focuses on serving your audience's needs, their challenges, their obstacles, their problems. I've been really thinking heavily about that. If that's something that you would like to see or hear, uh, let me know. And I say here because not only do you get the visual Nez Nation, which I know is just lovely, you also get our amazing podcast. If you're a podcast listener, we are on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Stitcher. Anywhere that you listen to podcasts, go to Nez Nation Live. Uh, just type in Nez Nation Live in your podcast search or just type in Professor Nez and you'll see the logo that looks just like it does underneath beyondtheboxacademy.com. I would love for you to subscribe to our podcast. All of these live streams, especially if you're listening to the podcast right now, thank you, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you guys big time. All of our live streams, I, I, I am a big believer in audio. I'm a big believer in podcasting. I'm a big believer in voice technology really taking over. And actually, maybe perhaps audio and podcasting, which is why I've been getting on a lot of you guys to create something like that, audio content, will be bigger than video was in 2016 and 17. I mean, I think audio is really going to be the next frontier for content creators, and it's going to be something that we all need to think about. Mia Diva Rodriguez. Mia Diva Rodriguez. It's about time you showed up on the best live stream on the planet. Where have you been? LinkedIn, I apologize. I'm not getting the comments here. So if you're leaving comments, I really apologize. Let me know. I'm just not getting anything. Community expert. Yes, Matthew Mitchell, community expert. Uh, so, so yeah. So hopefully, Kathy, fit that answered your question. LinkedIn, articles, LinkedIn, written posts, LinkedIn, um, networking, sharing your personal journey, sharing your story. Car Galaxy Studios in the house. That's the best way to brand on LinkedIn. Video is enormous. Video is tremendous. And guys, check this out. This is the last refuge. I'm almost afraid to say anything because I'm afraid I'm going to jinx it. This is the last refuge for organic reach. It really, really is. This is the last refuge for organic reach is LinkedIn. I get thousands and thousands of views on my videos. I get tons of engagement, tons of likes on my videos. And I'm a big believer in doing, you know, uh, I'm a big believer in doing, you know, uh, micro content um, that really takes your audience maybe to, to new content. Uh, or or lar longer form content like podcasts or live streams. So um, this is a this is a great way to demonstrate, show, don't tell. 
Anybody can talk a good game, but show me. Show me who you are. Show me why I should pay attention. What problem you can solve for me. Andrew Carnegie is one of the famous titans of industry here in the U.S. Uh, he was the steel baron for decades, and he resided in the Gilded Age of our country where we really usurped the U.K. and we usurped Europe as far as the dominant superpower because of our Industrial Revolution. And Andrew Carnegie wrote an amazing book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And in it, he says very, very poignantly, nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about you. You have to make people care about you. Most people, they really care about themselves. So if you get on in a video, if you're creating content for your personal brand on LinkedIn and you're just talking about you, 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 how cool you are and you're not actually responding to the comments, you're not actually engaging with people in, who are actually giving their time to your content, it's hasta la pasta. You're gonna really ruin your online reputation. You're gonna really ruin your online presence and you're not gonna build. You're just not gonna grow. It's not gonna happen. One of the things that's extremely important too is to be very, very patient. Elena's in the house. Good to see you, Elena. It takes time. One thing I love about my great friends that I saw at Vid Summit, like Car Galaxy Studios and Urban Explorer and 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 uh, Doug and and Beanie and others, uh, and the Nimmons, is that you know we're we have such an amazing. I I think most of us have an obviously we all want to grow at light speed, right? We all want more views, we all want more engagement, we want a larger audience, and it's not just for vanity. It's because when you have the audience, you have the leverage. You have to understand this. When you have the audience, that's when you have the leverage. When you have the attention, that's when you have the leverage. People don't really give a rat's ass about Casey Neistat, but now he's got all this attention. Holy macadamia nut. You think people actually want to do business with PewDiePie? He's got all this attention. I mean, Mr. Beast is like a teenager. But why is he making millions of dollars on YouTube? Because he's got the attention. Why can YouTube charge advertisers an arm and a leg to advertise on their platform? Why is Facebook able to charge an arm and a leg for you running ads on Facebook? Because they have the attention. They have the audience. Build your audience. Personal branding is about building an amazing community, building your tribe growing it. It's not necessarily about numbers per se. It's really high quality, high quality, uh, uh, you know, is way over quantity, but it's about building that leverage. That's what really personal branding is all about. Um, you know, really understanding where attention resides, understanding how to reach people. Daniel Alegi, good to see you. Fantastic. And that's, that's what, maybe I should do a part two. I gotta, I gotta actually, uh, I gotta actually kind of get out of here, but does anybody have any last second questions about branding, uh, on, uh, LinkedIn? Anybody have any all Juno Malone? Good to see you. Juno Malone on Twitch. How are you? Good to see you. Is that your dog? That's a beautiful dog. Is that a Labrador? I love that. Juno Malone on Twitch. Good to see you. I don't know why, uh, Ecamm doesn't show the avatars. I don't know why. Uh, Juno Malone says, Daniel Leggy, are you in the Swedish forest? Or are you in LA? Juno Malone says, uh, how important is it to have a personal motto on your LinkedIn page? Um, well, your LinkedIn, you're talking about your LinkedIn business page or are you talking about your LinkedIn profile? Because there's a difference. I've got a LinkedIn company page, but I also have a LinkedIn profile. Now, they're both basically resonant with my brand. I mean, they're both essentially the same things because I am, you got to understand something. People don't do business with buildings. People don't do business with logos. They do business with people, right? People don't hire pieces of paper. People don't hire a transcript or a diploma or a degree. People hire people. So, so by you being a human being and by you humanizing what you do, it's going to be all for the better. So, I mean, personal motto, 
uh, as long as it's a personal motto that's appropriate and that's professional and that actually is not just something like, uh, you know, eat tacos on Tuesday, fart on Sunday. Yeah, I would say definitely put your personal motto on there if it has something to do with serving your audience. So whatever your business and brand is, you need something. Where this You might have missed this, uh, Juno, but you need something that... Um, you need something that, okay, I think you're talking about headline. Headline should be not a motto or personal motto. Your headline should be optimized for search. Now, I have other videos about this, Juno Malone. I've definitely got a huge video called LinkedIn Branding uh, that you got to go check out. That's all about just, you know, I actually do a screen share and I go through the LinkedIn profile. Uh, I'll leave that in the card up above. But uh, definitely, definitely uh, go check that out because I think you're talking about the headline. But obviously, you wanna you wanna have, yeah, you wanna have something that's appropriate to um, appropriate to what it is that you want to be recognized for, what it is that you want to be known for, what it is that you want to. Uh, how are you going to serve your audience? That's that's ex- essential. So uh, I want to go over really quickly before uh, I want to go over some ideas that I have for, um, you know, where you can get good ideas for building your brand. And (laughs) I want to go over some ideas. Thank you, Mia Diva. Yeah, you don't, you you know, uh, here's the cool thing. I mean, actually, you know, you're, I'm kind of laughing at what Mia just said. What if we don't want to be professional? Look, um, it's personal branding is about showing your personality too having fun, not being stiff and rigid. I mean, you see me all the time. I have fun. I have fun in my classroom. Sometimes I roast my students and my students roast me and we go back and forth banter and I do a lot of joking. Nobody said that you can't have fun while you're working. Nobody said you can't have fun while you're learning. Nobody said you can't have fun while you're conducting business. But there's a fine line and I think you should trust your intuition on that and just really be aware of that. That's all. Absolutely. You know what? Have fun. Being professional doesn't mean being rigid or being, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, being uptight. Definitely it does not equate being uptight. Being professional just means making sure, yes, just just making sure that you're, um, you have to understand that everything that you put out there is going to be a part of the puzzle that people put together about you. That's really important to understand. Everything that you put out there, this is about taking strategic ownership of who you are and what value you bring. And everything that you put out there is just one piece of the puzzle that people are putting, uh, that are people are putting together uh, to, to kind of make sense out of who you are and cast judgment. When I say cast judgment, I don't mean that in a negative way. Cast judgment as in they're going to decide whether there's somebody that you're somebody that they want to do business with, whether it's somebody that they, that you're somebody that they want to hire, that there's somebody they want to bring in for an interview. Um, so if you're, if you're aware of that, um, you have nothing to worry about. Any other questions, any other concerns, any other, uh, comments, any other thoughts? I just want to say uh, it's been an absolute honor and pleasure. Make sure if you want to learn more about LinkedIn branding, personal branding, mindset, messaging, how to create a brand that can earn you more, grow you faster, and put you out there in a very succinct, direct way, check out my other content. Go to professornez.com forward slash live streams. Go on YouTube. I have tons of playlists on personal branding, mindset mastery. Go check those videos out there full of enormous, ginormous value. You know how we do, Nez Nation. We're bringing more humanness to this digitalness. And uh, it's all about making sure that, you know, you understand that this is a community. This is a real viable way for you to build relationships, for you to build that connection, for you to humanize who you are. So go check that out and make sure you subscribe to the podcast, the Nez Nation Live Personal Branding 101 Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast because I know you guys, when you're out there driving your cars, taking your dog for a walk, you're at the gym, podcasting is a very convenient way to get all of this information. So go check that out. Go, go to, go to, go to Nez Nation Live, whatever podcast player you have, whether it's Google podcast, whether it's Spotify, whether it's, um, 
Apple Podcasts, go subscribe. We would love it if you could write us a review on Apple Podcasts, especially it kind of counts a little bit more over there. I would really deeply appreciate it. But make sure you subscribe to the podcast because I'm going all in on podcasting. Thank you so much, Walter. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Car Galaxy Studios. Thank you, Mia Diva Rodriguez. I really appreciate all of you guys so much. And uh, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to hear more, if you'd like to learn more about LinkedIn, if you'd like to learn more about how to brand yourself on LinkedIn, how to get things cooking on LinkedIn, how to you know, really create a presence on this platform. I've been on this platform for over 10 years and I've built a pretty leverageable large audience that is really loyal and devoted and I know a thing or two about this thing. Uh, so I would love to help you more or just any topic, any other topic at all that you feel resonates with mindset and messaging. I'm all about it. I absolutely love you guys, Nez Nation. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out more. I got tons and tons of content. Thank you so, so much.